Welcome to this week's episode of Tulip TV. Here we are today on beautiful Granville Island and I'm looking at all these bicycles around us and it makes me think of Holland because Holland, of course, is the country of bicycles. Did you know that Holland is the leading European country in electric bicycles? Last year alone, we sold over 150,000 electric bikes or e-bikes. And here I look at all these racks I don't see any electric bikes. So what's up with that? Does Canada not have electric bikes? Or is it just Vancouver? And here's what's coming up next on Tulip TV. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. to London Bicycles. Today we're going on a bicycle tour through London and I'm going to take some Dutch tourists on the bike with me and we will see different angle from London from a very sporty perspective during the Olympics. My name is Des and I'm a tour guide at this company. And do you sometimes show around Dutch tourists around London? Very much so, yeah. And they make my job a lot easier because they're so competent in cycling they know how to look after themselves on the road and um, I have no problems with Dutch tours. They're my favourite group when they come to um, do tours. Alright, and so what kind of sites do you show the tourists on the map? Um, I take them around central London, so the obvious sites of like Buckingham Palace, Houses of Parliament, but then we take the back roads, so more interesting sites of London, so not just the touristy parts, the back streets and the um, less obvious sites of London as well. Can you tell me who you are and what you do here? Uh, my name is Anka and I'm just visiting here, a little city trip for about five, yeah, five days and just seeing the tourist highlights and trying to um, soak up some of the Olymp Olympic feel, I guess. So. And why did you choose to go on a bicycle tour? Um, well, I did one in Malaga in Spain and um, my sister lives in Madrid and she does this. She's a guide there in Madrid, oh, really? well, she used to be. And it's just a fun way to see the city and it's a f also it's a fast way and you can take the bus tour but then you get stuck in traffic and walking tours, you know, though you don't see as much in three hours as you would on a bicycle. So. What is your name and what are you doing here? My name is Klaas and I visit London for one day. And how are you liking London so far? It's uh, very nice. And what have you seen so far? Uh, the London Eye and the uh, Big Ben. And yeah, we have nog one day. Dus.
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. taking the time to, uh, out of your pleasant Vancouver evening, to come to what we think is a really pleasant location. Uh, the Dutch, as most of you might know, has been around for 37 years. And for us, over those 37 years, we've gone through a number of what I like to call reincarnations. And um, with this opening here, with not only where it's located, but the decor, the look, the atmosphere, and some of the things that we're doing both with the menu and what we're offering to our guests is what I am calling a watershed moment for the Dutch. I'm the guy for Tourism Vancouver that when I see somebody on the street looking a bit lost, notwithstanding I'm in the tourism industry, I like to walk up and ask them if they need a hand. And more often than not, I'm asked two questions. One, where can I find washrooms? But secondly, where can I find a good restaurant? More specifically, where can I get breakfast? And this convention center uh, expansion project is no exception. I was here in my office a few years ago when they put the first pile drivings in. And to see this neighborhood develop in the form of businesses, having Club 16, having Mahoney and Sons, of course, the convention center, a hotel across the street, it's really becoming a neighborhood and a place where people want to congregate, not only locals, but visitors as well. And they're gonna love coming to the, the Dutch. It will be a place where people will enjoy for many years to come. And to Bill and your team, congratulations. This is fantastic addition to the neighborhood. We wish you great success on behalf of the 1,000 members of Tourism Vancouver. And we look forward to welcoming you and the Dutch team to our membership in the very near future. Thanks very much. Sir, you are the founder of the Dutch Bank. I, I found it, yeah. <laughs> so, so how? How did you start with that? I mean, the, because the Canadians had their own American type of panic over No, when I was here, I came to Canada in 1975, no, no, 55, and I got into the restaurant business, and then when I was in Holland for a trip to see my parents, 1974, they took me to, or I took them to the Dutch panic house, and I got this big Dutch panic cook in front of me and I said to my father who was sitting next to me, that's what I'm going to do in Canada. And a year later we opened up the first one in Vancouver here, 1975. And from then on, well, look at it now. <laughs> if I'm a Canadian, why should I go into the Dutch panic cook house? It's a meal in itself in the plate, on the plate. It's just I, I, I don't know how to explain it really. It's, it's, is that it's, typical Dutch food? It is typical Dutch food. Yeah. You wouldn't find it anywhere else. The French got uh, crepes, the Germans got Pfannkuchen and all that, but ours are just kind of in between and they take up a whole plate. And the funny thing is that in Holland they eat it for lunch and, and dinner. When I started here, we opened up for breakfast and lunch and dinner and then people came in for dinner and they said well you'll come back for breakfast because we eat pancakes for breakfast in Canada and so then eventually we quit being open for dinner we just opened up for breakfast and it worked how, how, 
come you focus on this location with the Dutch? Oh, I think that's an easy question to answer. Uh, I mean, take a look. We've got a, a million dollar location, a restaurant with a million dollar view. Uh, so many people come by, um, very, very popular spot. It's funny, just in this last week, there must have been uh, probably two dozen Dutch people that were here on vacation and, and maybe as many German folks along with all kinds of people from all over the world. I think it's an excellent location for us to be at. And so how come uh, the design inside, it's, it's very, it looks very unique and is it something, is it a new direction where the Dutch is going? Um, yeah, it is a new direction, but this isn't the first time. We probably redo our, our look and our design every 10 to 15 years. This just happens to be one of the most dramatic changes that we've done. <laughs> so people eat Panekoeke for breakfast, lunch and dinner? Well, we're not open for, for dinner or supper. Um, in Holland, of course, that's when they eat the most of the time. But here in North America and Canada, it's primarily a breakfast, breakfast lunch item for, for most folks. So how many people did you already draw? I lost counting. <laughs> and actually, I always watch quality and not quantity. But in my life, I've drawn more than 30,000 people. Yeah, I start and I usually get my ideas while I'm drawing. So I do a lot of thinking while I draw. So why are you actually here in Canada? Well, if you have a profession like mine, I make comic strips and you can do it all through the internet. And then you can pick a place on earth to live without losing your job. That's why I'm in Canada. So I'm Harry Ongerden, and I'm the garden director here at Van Dusen Botanical Garden. Uh, we're here on a beautiful Friday sunny afternoon in Vancouver. I wish we had more of these beautiful sunny afternoons in Vancouver. But, you know, this is a garden that is beautiful at any time of year. It thrives on the rain, and people coming to this garden will see beautiful and very large specimens. Our plants grow big here, they grow fast. And I think people from around the world are very surprised to see what we can grow here in Canada. Uh, I think some people have this feeling, oh Canada, it's cold. Canada doesn't have much. In fact, this part of Canada grows a wider range of plants than anywhere in North America. So uh, I, I, I boast a bit about this. Uh, of course, I have no control over climate, but this garden is in a very beautiful part of the world and we think we represent the best that this part of the world has to offer. Now Van Dusen is a botanical garden and that means that we have an educational mandate. Uh, a botanical garden has to do with education, with plant conservation, with display, that is it has to look good, uh, and also scientific research where gardens have the resources to do that. We are different from display gardens, that is the gardens that are beautiful. Uh, I love them too, but they're beautiful just to look beautiful. Uh, don't we all love those gardens too? But this garden, I like to think, both looks beautiful and it has that educational mandate. We're here to teach people about plants, about the importance of plants, uh, and really about the importance of healthy ecosystems to to everything on Earth. Without healthy ecosystems, uh, we're not going to have these plants we love, and without healthy ecosystems, we're not going to do so well either as humans. Well, you know, over the years, the garden got more popular, more people coming, and we realized we really didn't have the facilities to receive them, to, well, people want to have a meal, don't they? People want to experience a garden and have other things to do. 
and we decided we needed a new welcoming facility and so we decided back in 2005 to build a new visitor center. From the very beginning when our garden was first created back in 1975, uh, there was something here called the International Sculpture Symposium and uh, artists came from around the world and created a, a permanent sculpture collection for us out of stone. And, you know, right from the earliest days, we have had an interest in, really a focus on art. Uh, sculpture looks wonderful outside. Uh, sculpture is best seen outside, from all sides. And we have uh, a continuing program uh, today. We have uh, new sculpture. Uh, some wonderful things have been happening in the garden. An African uh, art show, an African sculpture show over the last three years. Uh, this year, something quite, quite different. Uh, we have something called Earth Art. And Earth Art is a name that some people use. It's a type of environmental art. And we have brought, again, like in 1975, we have brought international artists to Van Dusen to create uh, Earth Art for us. Now, Earth Art takes as its inspiration nature, and the artists use natural materials to create their art. Uh, it's a little different from that stone art of 1975. That stone art is still here many years later. Earth art can look beautiful for days, merely days, because living things will die, living things will wither. Uh, we have a wide selection of earth art here. Some will last many years. We have a piece just installed here that's intended to last and change over 200 years. We also had something uh, created here by Neil Zudo of Germany, uh, which is an ephemeral piece. Ephemeral meaning it will last only a few days. It looks gloriously beautiful, very briefly, and then it's gone. So this is an art form quite different from the art of the past. I think artists created art and wanted it to last. The earth artists, have a different philosophy. They are, with the creation of their art, commenting on nature, commenting on the, I think, fragility of nature. If their art disappears, it, um, I think it bothers uh, these artists much less than the typical artists of the past. We have, you might say, a new member of the family here at Van Dusen. Uh, Vancouver has a beautiful tropical conservatory that is a garden under glass. Uh, it's been here since the late 1960s and it was going through a bit of a struggling period a little while ago uh, due to construction, uh, Olympic construction and so on and so on and it gave the park board here in Vancouver an opportunity to look at how that uh, Bloedel conservatory was operated. And uh, I think what everyone concluded was that it should be part of Van Dusen Botanical Garden. Now it's uh, some massive structure. We're not moving it here, but you know, it's less than a kilometer away. And now visitors to our garden can also go over and see this under glass tropical garden. Um, I think every botanical garden wants a conservatory. Uh, when the weather is bad, uh, and that could be hot <laughs> in some climates, uh, here it tends to be the cold and wet season, uh, well we've got a beautiful place to go to get out of the rain, out of the cold, and uh, we're very happy now to be connected formally with the Bloedel Conservatory. Winters. Uh, I live in the Netherlands. I'm a member of Artists for Conservation and at the moment we are in the Artist Library of the University of Amsterdam. Ja, de hele bibliotheek begint hier. Ja, want dit is het beeld van Westerman en Westerman is de is de oprichter van de dierentuin, dus Artis en Dus in dit gebouw hebben dus allemaal boeken, um, dus over dieren en de, dus een van de belangrijkste werken is van Mufon, 
En dat is een encyclopedie over dieren en geschreven in 1760. En ja, verder hebben boeken voor de zin. I have a small exhibition here of the paintings I made for the flag expedition, not the way of the dodo. Um, they are here in these um, uh, shows. Um, they were published in a book. And this exhibition is about the paintings and the book. These two paintings are of um, lizards of Mauritius. They're an endemic species. When I made them, I didn't know they were going to publish on the front and the back cover of the book, but this is how it's happened. So these are two original paintings. And later on, when the book was published, I found out that they were printed on the, the front and the, the last cover of the book. Um, the book is published in Mauritius. It was actually part of the, the project and it serves the purpose of the project because it gives, um, it provides uh, publicity for the endemic endangered species of Mauritius, which was the purpose of the project. Okay, this is um, the dodo. Um, many people would know the dodo of the movies, but may not know exactly where the dodo came from. And the dodo was a giant flightless pigeon um, that lived on Mauritius. It existed as a species for 25 million years and died out within 90 years after the arrival of man on the island. There's not much discussion about it, what it looked like. Was it gray, uh, was it brown? Mine one is, is, is brown because there is one painting that we know for sure of, uh, it was made by life. Um, and, and actually that, that dodo is brown, so I painted mine brown as well. Um, on the background are books of the artist library. So for me, um, the dodo is a sort of a study object, um, but also a, a beautiful bird that I try to revive in my painting. Well, well first of all, of course, I, I'm an artist. Um, I've been painting animals and florals all my life, but um, I'm a member now of Artists for Conservation for about 12 years and that group moved into the conservation side uh, more and more. And because I did the flag expedition to Mauritius, I actually became more and more a conservationist because uh, my project asked for um, attention for the endemic species of Mauritius and other island species. And it works great. I get a lot of positive reactions from people. Uh, the artist library um, had the idea to, ha to have an exhibition here because they are also uh, selling the book that was published after my uh, project to Mauritius. Um, one of the species of Mauritius has a special connection with the artist library because um, here in this library is the only uh, picture in color that was made of the Mauritius blue pigeon. I'm going to Vancouver because um, the, the annual festival of Artists for Conservation, uh, they asked me to come over to do a lecture about my project in Mauritius. So I said, yes, of course, I'll come over. Um, one of my paintings is on display as well there at the show. Um, and I'm also doing three uh, workshops for kids to give attention, to ask for attention for biodiversity and um, island species. Um, there will be workshops for kids from 3 to 10 years old. So there's the workshops for the kids, the lecture about Mauritius and uh, my paintings and I'm also doing live demos.
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. We're independently produced and have no funding and no grants, therefore solely rely on viewers like you. If you like our program, go to our website to sponsor us and click on Donate. Thank you for watching this week and tot ziens!